Our first topic, work and the work energy theorem. In this topic, we'll deal with, again, what work and energy are. We'll define them, and we'll define how, how they're related, how work can cause changes in energy. And before we get started, let's just talk about how we define the concept of work. We say work is done on an object, and work is usually done on an object by a force. If an object is experiencing, experiencing an unbalanced force, it will cause change in its motion. It could speed up or slow down. Uh, when we deal with the concept of work and energy, the most powerful concept in, in science, and really one of the most important across the board, is the concept of conservation. When something is conserved, it means the total net quantity of whichever quantity we're interested in remains a physical constant. So if energy is conserved, it means the energy before and after stays the same. Or if momentum is conserved, momentum before and after stays the same. Or if matter is conserved, let's say in a chemical reaction, the total amount of matter that you start off with in a chemical change is equivalent to what you end up with. So when we're looking at different physical systems, let's say a roller coaster going down a hill, or a car skidding to a stop. We're only interested in the initial condition. Let's take some time and write. And the final condition. We're never interested in what's happening in between. So when we do snapshots of physical systems, we're only interested in, we'll say, before and after, initial and final. A nice example of uh, how conservation comes out to play is candy. If we know yet there are 50 pieces of candy at the beginning, there must be 50 pieces of candy at the end. If there are 50 pieces of popcorn in the beginning, there are 50 at the end. The total net quantity stays the same. It just shifts around from one place to another or one form to another. More on that soon. Uh, you can change them any way you prefer, but you'll have 50 before and after. Again, what you start off with is what you end up with in every single case, and that's when something is conserved. It's saved or it stays the same. Uh, and we can define or explain how physical systems will behave in any case with conservation. Uh, energy is a conservable quantity. Uh, energy is a conserved property of nature, and it's neither created nor destroyed. So that means you'll neither gain, create, or destroy, lose energy. It just flip-flops from one form to another. And the basic assumption that holds true is that if a system is closed, it neither gains nor loses energy, and it, the net or the total amount will stay the same. Uh, energy can only move from uh, the only way energy can move at, in or out of a system is if it's added or taken away. So let's look at the hey, look at these people on a roller coaster enjoying conservation of energy. We start off with some initial condition, and we end up with the final condition. The total amount of energy that we start off with is what we end up with in the end, and that's important. So we could say energy initial is equal to energy final. So E is the initial, E prime, that's just that symbol mean that symbol prime just denotes that it's the final condition. And in essence, this is the rule that governs the entire universe. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. What is energy? It's extremely difficult to explain. You're hearing energy or you're observing energy in my in my voice right now. You're looking at the probably looking at a computer monitor or a television you're observing electromagnetic energy that's a form of energy or your heater turned on or your air conditioning we're adding and removing energy to a physical system with those devices heating and air conditioning what energy is is extremely difficult to define um, however even though it's hard to define it's it's extremely useful when we're making measurements or predictions in physics hey this concept of energy it's almost like a crystal ball. It's very mysterious, but we can use this crystal ball, let's say, to look into the future. Recently, in the previous slide, we defined conservation of energy. If we call the amount of energy that we start off with as being E prime or E naught, the initial form, and what we end up with as being E sub F, the final energy, again, we say that what we start off with 
the initial energy is equivalent to the final energy. It turns out that there are only two ways to change energy in a physical system. One is heat and the other one is work. If we define positive work with an increase in energy, we end up with an equation that looks like this. And I'll explain what this means. The energy what you start off with will be equal to the energy that you end up with only in cases where this thing called work, and we'll define work in a moment, is non-existent when it's zero. So if work is zero, what you start off with is what you end up with. But let's say you do work on an object, we'll reveal the work. If work is done on an object, that, that number will not be zero, and the object will gain energy. Let's look at an example. Just say, for example, you start off with 10 units, 10 joules of energy. And let's say no work is done. Zero joules of work are done. In the end, what you start off with, 10 plus zero, will be what you end up with, 10 joules. If this work is not zero, let's just change it. Let's say that work is two joules. The new answer would be 12 joules. This object would have started off with 10 joules, if two units of work are done, it gains two joules and you end up with 12. But they're still equal. What you start off with, energy plus work, is what you end up with. And again, a very beautiful concept. Work is the, again, is the ability to cause change. If you look at these gentlemen pushing on the aircraft, it's easy to see that a force will be acting in the direction that they push. It's going to act on the airplane. And if that airplane moves, and let's assume it's moving in the direction that the force is applied through some distance, work was, is going to be done. Work, in, work can be done on a, on a system when an external force, the red vector is the force, is not part of the system. Where does that work come from? Or excuse me, where does the force come from? It comes from the people. An external force coming from the people is acting on the airplane. It moves and work is done. So these folks are essentially doing work on the plane. The airplane will change its motion because work is being done. We can define work mathematically. Work by definition, W is work, I'll write this in words, is equal to the product of force and distance or displacement. Displacement we'll use in this case. So work is force times displacement, W is F times D. And we can use this equation in order to predict if work is done. Now, it says D parallel. Work will only be, be done on an object when it moves in the direction that the force is applied or the opposite direction. So it could be parallel or anti-parallel. And we'll take a look at that in the next slide. In this case, this acrobat is in a state of equilibrium. He's not moving. Since there's no distance traveled or displacement of this person, there's no work being done. Let's write the equation down. We'll jot it. Work is force times displacement. And since the displacement is zero, if I were to put a zero on one side of the equation, automatically the other side is zero, so there's no work being done. This is extra, and this is not related, but let's free body diagram this guy. What's pulling down on him? What force is acting downward on this gentleman? That's right, it's gravity, and that force will be mg. Now, if the only force acting on this guy were mg, he would free fall down. He's not moving. He's neither moving up nor down. So that downward force must also be accompanied by an upward force. That is the plank that he's standing on, is pushing up on both feet. Take a second and see if you can remember which his force is. 
which force this is. That's right, it's the normal force. And since the normal forces are balanced, there's no net force. And since there's no movement, there's no displacement, the work done on this guy is nothing. All right, an example of a case where work is done on an object. Is there a force? Yes, there is a force. So that force is not zero, and it's moving. Just imagine this object is moving to your right. So the displacement is not zero. There is a displacement. We'll put a D here. If the force and the distance are not zero, then there's work being done. The sign of the work on this case is positive. When the force acts in the direction of the displacement, positive work will be done. And the work is greater than zero. So it might be positive one, positive two, et cetera, and so on. So work is being done. Now since, this, since the mass is experiencing an unbalanced force, acceleration will occur. If we were to draw velocity vectors for this object, Let's give it some non-zero velocity to the right in the beginning. I'll call that the initial speed, v naught, and then some time later, because the non-balanced force is acting on it, time is going by one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three, and so on. When it gets to this point on the table, its velocity would have increased. And if you see it's going slow, here it's going fast. Work is the ability to cause change, it accelerates and this object will change its velocity. Not only is it going to have work done on it, it will change its another form of energy, its kinetic energy. It's the energy of motion. So it starts off slow, ends up going fast, its motion changes. Big picture. Next slide. This is an unusual one, so we'll use our imagination here. Just imagine that this object, and we'll draw velocity vectors on this, in a moment. Just a does this object have a force acting on it? The answer is yes. So there is a force. It's unbalanced. And there is a displacement. So there's work being done. Definitely there's work being done. In this case the work is negative. When the force vector and displacement displa vector oppose each other or they're anti-parallel, they point in opposite directions, the work done is indeed negative. And if this object were, let's give it a velocity vector to the right. And I'll make this one large. I'll call this V naught. And then sometime later, it's going with some VF. It would have slowed down. Think of a force that would make this slow down. That's right, friction. So just imagine this is sliding across this rough surface. And it's moving from the left to the right. The frictional force would be opposing motion. And it would go from a large velocity to a small velocity. This is negative work. Again, acceleration occurs because there's an unbalanced force and work is done. So the work is negative in this case. last case, which is, isn't as easy to understand it. for many people, it's a matter of memorization. In this case, there is a force acting on the object, and that force would be straight up. Let's call it the normal force, because the table is holding it up. Oh, and it is labeled as a normal force. How nice. And this object is moving to the right. Since it doesn't experience, this is unusual, since, since it doesn't experience a force acting in the direction that it's moving, no work is done. So the work, actually this is incorrect. The work done is zero. And this is correct. Because a component of the force has to be in the direction of the displacement. So no work is done by the normal force. No acceleration will occur. There's no change in motion. There might be another force that's acting on this. Not only is the normal force acting on this, but gravity is pulling down. And we'll call that mg. Since the 
gravity vector, mg, the force of gravity and the displacement are also perpendicular. And no component, no part of this gravity vector falls in the direction of the displacement. No work is done. No work is done on this object. So things will keep on doing what they're doing until work is done on them. So let's do a quick rewind. In this case, the force is unbalanced. And there is a part of the force that acts in the direction of the displacement. So work is done. It would cause an increase in speed. In this case, let's say there was friction, the purple lines. Since the force is opposing motion, it starts off with some large velocity and ends up with nothing. The work is negative. It may slow down. And when the force and displacement vectors, so again, normal force and displacement, they're perpendicular, or mg and displacement, they're both perpendicular, there's no work being done. Now, we have a quantitative understanding of what work is. And we've defined the equation for work. It's the product of force times displacement. Work is done when uh, displacement is in the direction with or against the force. But we can define the units for work. And work is force, which is newtons, times displacement, which is meters. So work could be measured in newton meters. That's one unit. Another way of writing this is kilogram meter squared per second squared. I can define that. It's going to take a second. Newtons are kilograms. Newtons are mass times acceleration. Kilograms times meters per second squared. So that is a newton times a meter. So we end up with kilograms times meters times meters divided by second squared. And it gives us the fundamental units for work. But most people will refer to work in joules, named after in, in honor of James Joule, who made critical contributions in the concept of energy, specifically therm thermal physics. And we named the unit of energy in his honor. What an honor. Just like we named the unit of force after Newton. So work could be measured in joules, Newton meters, or kilogram meters squared per second squared. It's most intuitive to say that work is done in joules or newton meters. Very rarely will you say, oh, yes, so-and-so did 65 units, 65 kilogram meters squared per second squared units of uh, work on this. But most of these, all of these units can be broken down into fundamental units. And interesting, mechanics deals primarily with mass, length, and time. You can do anything with those three quantities. So beautiful. Again, here's a picture of James Joule himself. And again, this is a statement of conservation of energy. Objects will, when, when no work is done, the, the initial energy and final energy will be equivalent. Energy is measured in joules, work is measured in joules, and energy is measured in joules. If there is work done, your final energy goes up. If the work is positive, the final energy goes up. If the work is negative, the energy will go down, just like we saw in the previous slides.